Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of DGS. Mr. Holmes has just finished his uh, deductions, and now we are, have to go in and uh, reroute some of his deductions now. Um, a moment, holmes -san. Hey, how do you do? How do I do? You never would have imagined that a lonely detective would come up with such a hot deduction, did you? Was it true? The bit about the bank across the street? Yeah, it's the British government's greatest secret. The only people in the entire country know about it. I heard it from Gregson, see? After being sworn to secrecy. <laughs> you can't you can't see it, but I'm like face palming so bad. But you blutter it out pretty loudly just now. Ah. Uh, for starters, how would Benedict San have found out about such a top secret information? Well, that's obviously because he's a bad guy. <laughs> obviously. But if it turned out that Benedict Sama were a bad guy who didn't know anything about it, we can pretty safely assume that upon hearing that information just now, he'd rush out to buy a new shovel. No. And even before that, what if Hatchson, who at a first glance seems to be a good person, also started digging up his basement tonight? I'm not a villain! <laughs> well, think about it. Now you two know. Just how dangerous it could be if certain information gets into the wrong hands like this. If someone carelessly blabs it, it can't be taken back. Thanks, Sherlock. I'll be sure to remember that next time I need to consult with you, holmes -san. Yeah, I think that's for the best. <laughs> holmes -san, please. Now then, Naruhoto-sama. It's time once more for the usual. Right, let's look over this famous deduction one more time. In that case, shall we begin? Sherlock Holmes, Logic and Reasoning, Experimental Theater. Alright, let's do this again. The Mysterious Gentleman's Objective. What was it that caused you to appear in this pawn shop in the first place? Earlier, your claim check was stolen from you in the streets, and you gave chase. That was a lie. There's another reason. A real reason. Yes, that real reason is there in your hand. The thing that led you to the shop in the first place was that now hiring notice. According to Holmes-san, Mr. Benedict's obje objective is... to set himself up as an employee at the shop and dig up the basement, right? Yes, in order to get his hands on the money in the vault of the bank across the street. I just don't think he'd be able to get very far with a broken shovel. In which case, his target may in fact be something else. Why did he show up in this pawn shop at a time like this? Let's look at this flyer a little bit more closely. There's something in the back of it. Uh, huh? The back of the flyer is packed full of scrunch writing. It's... Wh what is it? These scribbles. Name, Gina Lestrade. Height, 5.2 feet. Wearing a ratty green hat, a ratty vest, and a ratty blue bag, and a ratty white shirt. There's a perfect description of Gina's on written here. What? There's even a portrait of Gina's on drawn on it. The quality of it makes me think that Gina-san would probably launch one of her smoke shells if she saw it, though. There's information about the shop written here, too. Hatch's Pawn Shop, Baker Street. Pickup deadline, 4.15. 4.15. That's today. What's Mr. Benedict doing with something like this? Let's present this information. The thing that led you to the shop in the first place was that description of Gina in your hand. Right! 
The rough portrait scribbled on the back of that flyer appears to be of the pickpocket Gogina, along with information about this pawn shop. Uh. You previously stated the following. You chased after Gina after she stolen your claim check. However, that was a refreshingly obvious lie. <laughs> Gina! You came here because of the information jotted on the back of that flyer. Today, the pickup deadline. You kept close watch on Hatch's pawn shop. And then you waited for the girl in the description to appear. Uh. Gotcha. You were determined enough to catch the girl that you were willing to lie. In other words, we can assume that there is some sort of special intent here. That cane that you just instinctively raised contains a large contradiction. With, with my cane. What absurdity. The contradiction with that cane is of course its tip. Maybe it's not that tip. Um, when he says the tip, it refers to the metal covering on the end of a cane. Oh, the part of the cane that gets pounded against the ground, right? He was right. This cane certainly does lack that part. It seems to have simply broken, as far as I can see. However, it was true that he was rattled by Home Sama's words. In other words, there's some sort of secret behind Mr. Benedict's cane. Alright, let's look at the other end of the cane instead. I believe we have initials there? Yes, we do, and they do not match Mr. Egg Benedict. Susano-san, look at this, please. There appears to be letters engraved on it. These must be initials. Westerners seem to engrave their initials on their belongings. So if it was Sherlock Holmes, the initials would be SH, right? Precisely. In other words, the initials engraved there, here, must be... Huh? R... C? Huh? Something doesn't seem quite right here. Let's present those initials. <laughs> the cane's contradiction. Naturally, it's the initials on it. Precisely! That's what it is, Mr. Be Mr. Egg Benedict. The initials for the name Egg Benedict would be E.B. However, the initials engraved on, on this cane are R.C. I don't think there can be any contradictions clearer than that. Uh, no, actually, this cane... ...belongs to you. You said so earlier. Look at that smug face he has! Huh? Don't think you can smooth things over by trying to claim that you picked it up from over there. In other words, while posing as a gentleman, you're using a pseudonym. Oh. oh my, you seem rather sh You seem rather shaken. Is something wrong? Well. That movement indicates the answer to you, my next question. That is to say, what is the true nature of that rod in your hand? And... The reaction you just gave tells me the answer. The key to unraveling this mystery is the cane's handle, which you just hid. Maybe it's not the handle. Gina-san came to withdraw her pawn item, the fancy coat. And just at that moment, a man with a curious name appears and claims that coat's mine. Give it back. That man came to the shop because of that profile description in his hand, so that can only mean that the claim was a lie. In that case, then we have to prove that that coat doesn't belong to him. Examine the stylish hat. <laughs> That's what it says on here. Now that I've been looking at this top hat for a while, I started thinking that a pure white silk hat might look pretty good on me. Do you like that sort of thing? I think I do. So Naruto likes pure white silk hats. In that case, perhaps when this incident has been resolved, we can go have a look at all the pawn goods. But for now, let's focus on our deduction. Right, let's see what's going on back here. Oh, he did tear his shirt. 
The coat, excuse me. Look at this! The seam along the shoulder, it's splitting! Uh, you're right. When when Benedict Selma was shot by the statement of deduction earlier, I thought I heard something that sounded like a scream of rip. But it wasn't a scream, it was the sound of cloth of the cloth tearing. And when you look closely, look how tight fitting that coat is. The arms are straining, and I'm pretty sure there's no way he'd be able to button it up. So it's too big on Gina, but it's too small on Benedict. If he were to run around in that coat, I'm pretty sure he'd end up tearing it to shreds. Huh. I'd certainly like to see that. What? What, Susano? I wonder if there's some way we can get Benedict Sama to run around. Does Susano like muscly men or something? Susano san. Looks like she's deep in thought. Okay, but then again, she does do Susano toss. Is she like a wrestling fan? Maybe. I don't know. Present the rip seam in the shoulder. The rip seam in your shoulder is the key to answering this question. Uh. As far as I can see, that coat doesn't appear to fit you properly. Because you forced it on, one of the seams has begun to tear. I thought it suspicious from the start. You ambushed the pickpocket girl and used a fake name. You're not even the owner of those pawn items. <clears throat> For you to shroud yourself in lies this way, you can have only one goal. You are trying to make off with the pawn item that Pocket Pit Pocket Girl have withdrawn. Wah! <laughs> I love his animations. There's only one unfortunate thing about all of this. It seems that your major crime has just been scaled down quite a bit. Yeah, that would really change, uh... That would change his crime. Anyway, new conclusion. To steal Gina's pawn item. Second topic. The massive crime. Which has been downgraded. Now, Mr. Benedict, I'm afraid this isn't the end of the story. It's my duty to expose the massive crime you're plotting, see? Utterly laughable. You think I would bother trying to steal someone's worthless pawn rubbish? Recall, I went through the proper process of withdrawing a pawn item using the password. If I hadn't pawned this item with my own hands, how would I have known the password? It's impossible. Unfortunately, there is a way you could have found out the password. And surely you know what that way would be, don't you, Mr. Benedict? Your line of vision is even more honest than I thought. Huh? How did you know the pawn item's password, you ask? That reason is clearly indicated in that circular notice you just glanced at. Maybe not the gl maybe not the notice uh notice thing, but the logbook next to it. It sir seems that deduction's course is about to change in a major way. I feel like we won't be hearing all this talk about tunnels again. I kind of like that deduction, though. <laughs> he liked a deduction! Oh my god. Well, anyway. This mysterious gentleman obviously knows the password. He said it was Professor. Someone who didn't know the password wouldn't be able to draw, wouldn't be able to withdraw a pawn item. But if you think about it in reverse, anyone who knows the password could withdraw it. Did that mysterious gentleman have a chance to find it out? Well, let's look at this notice first. Baker Street Correspondence. It seems that this has been circulated around this afternoon- this neighborhood. If I recall, it talks about the plumbing construction they're planning to do. Huh? The cake shop on the corner will be having a sale starting this evening? Not a hold sama We can have cake after this incident has been resolved. Oh, am I really that transparent? Yes, yes you are. Alright, let's check the memo. But man, I would like cake too. Uh, is it gonna let me? Susato-san, look at this. 
It's a memo that Hatch Summer jotted down in pen. Uh, it says... Professor. Wow. I mean, I knew that that was probably the case, but wow. It looks like Hachan writes down the passwords in front of the customers. In a rather bold... In rather bold, visible letters. Oh, it makes me uneasy to see that right out in the open like that. Yep, but that's our clue, so let's do it. <laughs> the way you could have known is clearly intimated by Hatch's memo, which you just glanced at. Every time an item is brought here to be pawned, the shopkeep follows the same pattern. When the customer states their password, he writes it down on his memo pad right in front of them. And then he checks the ledger and compares the password. You could say that it's, it's, that it's a very precise method of work, just as one would expect from a shopkeep. Yeah, but he left it on the open! But you could also say that it's a precise way to get your information stolen. What do you mean? In other words, you must have come to the shop before showing yourself. Perhaps you follow Gina-san inside after seeing her come in. And the shopkeep wrote down the password memo just as he always does. Professor, you caught sight of it. Look at this animation though. I feel like, I feel like that, that 3D anim uh, flashback that we just have, that might be how this 3D will play for the cutscenes in DGS2 now, since, again, they're, uh, they're not gonna have, like, 2D animated uh, cutscenes anymore. Anyway. In other words, that's precisely... Your evil plan for swiping Miss Gina's pawn item! E evil plan?! Oh my! Say no more! This brings us at last to our final question. Why on earth would you go to so much trouble to steal those pawn items? This is what I like to know. What? A coat that doesn't fit you and a music box disc don't seem particularly valuable. Naturally, you must have some secret that explains why you would target those two items. Am I right? But what are you talking about? I have the faintest idea. I feel like we're just about to be shown some most fascinating evidence. The secret of what we're, what you're targeting is drawn on that postcard. The pawn items that he withdrew were a coat and a disc that was in the pocket. According to the shopkeep, the disc isn't worth even one penny. But that man is trying to steal them anyway. Why on earth would he do that? Perhaps we have some sort of evidence that indicates the reason. Evidence, huh? I better look it over carefully. All right, we'll look into that stuff then. Well, wow, okay, the only thing we have is this, so let's look at it. Uh, let's look at the blood spot. These, there are some incredibly fine bumps engraved on this disc. The music box reads these bumps in order to play music. And there's just a little drop of blood here. The blood of the, of the mysterious gentleman, Mr. Egg Benedict. He must have cut his finger when Gina Sama was trying to steal back the disc. Like grating a daikon with a vegetable grater. Is it really necessary to make that painful comparison? The perfect comparison, though. Alright. I know there's even anything here, so how about we flip it? Oh, shit. Does that say Mango Doll? There's a small piece of paper stuck to this. It seems to be a memo. A person's name, perhaps? To Mangle Doll. Mangle Doll? Can't be. Ladies and gentlemen, we're on the fifth case and Mangle Doll's name comes back up again. Yes, there's no doubt about it. There's no way we could forget that name. What's the man's name doing in a place like this? I just went too fast there. Uh, music box disc. Makes music box play. There's a memo stuck on the back that says to Mango Doll. Well, now there's some value to this. So let's present it. <laughs> the 
The secret as to what you're after is written on the back of this music box disc. The back of the disc. To Mangadon. The... Cosney Mangodal. Two months ago, he died a mysterious death at Old Bailey's courthouse. A vicious loan shark hailed as a star of London, while in truth being surrounded by dark suspicion. Are you one of his friends? Or perhaps you worked under him? You know, this whole thing would have been solved they just flipped the disc now. <laughs> Mr. Mangodal was a man of rather small stature. In fact, that small coat likely would have fit him perfectly. <laughs> we still may not have figured out your real name, Mr. Egg Benedict, but this is our final conclusion. Your objective in coming to the shop was... <laughs> to recover something left behind after Cosney Mangodal. <laughs> Damn it! New conclusion. To recover something left behind by Cosney Mangodal. Sold! We have- we- we... Mangodal's name popping up in the fifth case. Jesus Christ. Cosney Mangodal, hmm? I never would have imagined that I'd be seeing that name again today. Same here. Um, there's just one thing that's bothering me. What might that be, Miss Usato? According to what Hatch-sama said previously, the article that was left behind when Megadol-sama passed away, I believe we were told that today was the deadline to be withdrawn, correct? Uh, y yes that's right. It'll have been two months today. Today is 4.15. Exactly two months ago, the date would have been... 2.15, yes, and my ledger confirms it. It was deposited around 10.30pm. That's what's written here. Uh, it can't be. But it was... 2.15 was... The murder that occurred on the Omnibus was on that very day. In addition, at 10.30pm, it's a perfect match for the time that the murder is said to have occurred. Oh, Jesus. I don't believe that we can conclude that this is mere coincidence. You're free to enjoy your self-indulgent deductions all you want, but... What? What? Why? <laughs> I'll need you to hand over the coat and music boxes at once. Jesus Christ, what is on this desk? I doubt you wish to die in this foreign land in that pitch black garb of yours. Uh, oh, what should I do? Hand over the desk? I'll never hand it over. Guard it with your life, Naruto. There are some things a man must protect regardless of the consequences. This might be one of those things. But then again, it might not be. He had a voice! Oh! H hatch -san. If anything were to happen to one of my customers in my shop, I, Hatch, would have no choice but to apologize with my own death! H hatch -san. That's quite enough! Oh, here comes the police! D Detective Gregson! Detective... There's a secret direct line running from this pawn shop to police. We got a crime in progress signal, so... We came running. What's going on here? <sighs> You're finally here. If you've been any later, I would have met my noble end here in my own shop. Oh, Gregson to the rescue. Maybe. It seems that I should just quietly acknowledge my loss for now. Honestly, give us a break! Calling the police for something as trivial as this. 
Trivial? There were guns being blown around here. What do you mean trivial? Hatchsama was about to blow his own brains out. By the looks of it, the thing about to blow his brains out was the gun in his own hand, though. <sighs> We're in the middle of a major case that could blow Great Britain's brains out. Uh, what kind of case would... You'd best start talking, Detective Grayson. That was a slip of the tongue. It's got nothing to do with you lot. Anyway, why don't you follow me down to Scotland Yard? Very well. <laughs> he just twirls away! Man on the run! Quickly! After him! Somewhere cocked at the station! Sir! Oh my god, he just twirled away in Team Rocket style. I can't even. <laughs> what is this man? I don't think that's the last we'll see him, but Jesus. Oh my god. <laughs> there have been a lot of thefts targeting pawn shops in this area lately. So we've installed buttons on the shop counter so that we can easily be alerted if a crime is taking place. Ugh. To be honest, I was right terrified. Now then, black clad exchange student. Yes. Golden Yard will be taking possession of that item left behind after the death of Cosney Mengodal. Give it here! Uh, uh, right. You better not give it to him, Narahoda. That belongs to me! Ah, uh, sorry to tell you this, young lady. But all of Mengodal's possessions are being confiscated as evidence. Evidence? You've got no choice, Mr. Narahoda. If he tells you it's evidence, then you've got to hand it over. Here, take it, Junior Detective. He's awfully, uh... Uh, willing to give this away? <laughs> <sighs> I ended up giving Mr. Mangodal's disc to Detective Gregson. And then we were kicked out of the shop. <laughs> Aww! Uh, looks like there's gonna be a to be continued. So... Uh, there's really only two minutes left uh, for this session, so I think it's probably best we can stop it here to be continue and continue on with the whatever happens next in the next video. So, thank you for watching everybody, and I'll see you guys then.